Hey everyone. So today I'm going to show you guys how I 3D printed and basically put together this face shell by Andre Blend. Now this is a little bit different from the face shells I usually get. Uh, might as well just show you what I usually get for face shells. Before I used to get my face shells, mostly the MCU face shells. I usually get them from T-Jack. This is my favorite T-Jack face shell. This is homecoming one I got back in. 2018 I think it was 2017 now this face shell is vacuum formed which means it's very flexible It's made out of plastic that's strong and you know you can flex around and shit and the lens frames are molded and uh, Casted in resin and then the other type of face shell that I've gotten uh, this is actually the most recent one I've gotten if you've guys seen the video this one is my Matthew de la Cruz ultimate face shell this one is 3d printed and then the lenses are printed on a, what do you call it, a resin printer. That's why they're so smooth and stuff. Now obviously they don't have the actual lens um, in them. That's because I, I'm gonna replace them with something later on. But this is 3D printed. It's not as flexible, but it is strong and durable and then it fits perfectly on the face. And then we have the one I made that I 3D printed using Andre Blend's file. I'll leave a link in the description to this specific file I used. Now this is version two face shell and lens uh, files. Of course the lenses are magnetic. They're actually 3D printed. And then the jaw and then the actual shell itself is separate. You can kind of tell when I did that and they're bonded together using spandex so that the jaw can move I'll Kind of show you guys right now what that looks like So you can see I can move my jaw up and down comfortably Perfect, you know, uh, I'm really glad I decided to go ahead and 3d print my own face shell instead of just buying another one Now before I, we actually go into how I actually made it. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys my progress I made on trying to print this. So the, my first attempt at 3D printing the face shell was just the top piece, the majority of the head. This was the first print I ever did and uh, I didn't do anything, I just, uh, I didn't scale it at all, I just printed it as it was and I found it was way too small for my head. Doesn't even fit, I have so this was way too small. The next print I did was at, I scaled it up 5%, so it was scaled to 105%. And it actually came out pretty good. Uh, you can see the glue stains there are where I first tried the spandex uh, jaw thing. And it was good until I found that when, after I glued down the spandex and stuff, Jesus, <laughs> put it on and everything, it would hurt my, the top of my head when I tried to move the jaw down. So then I found out, okay, this again is too small. I went back and scaled it up one more percent, so it was at 106%, and I also um, went down one in quality. And that's where this led us. Uh, because I went down in quality of the print, the face shell uh, just kind of ripped off the top part when I was sanding it. Uh, <laughs> and you can obviously tell I uh, tried using bigger magnets on here, and it just didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. So luckily only the top half broke, and that's where we get to this one. This I went up in quality and um, the jaw is still the same jaw I printed to go along with this at the same quality. But, you know it worked out great and you know this is a strong face shell. So now we're gonna go ahead and go on to how I printed it, uh, how I put it together and all of that. All right, hey everyone, so here we are in Ultimaker Cura. This is the program I use to slice my files for 3D printing. Here we have Andre Blend's face shell uh, files. Here is the actual face shell top half. And then here we have the jaw. Here we have the right lens. And then here, oh, that was the left lens. And here we have the right lens. So I'm basically going to show you how I positioned my files and um, how, uh, what thing I printed them at. I don't really know that much about 3D printing. Uh, and if you have any more tips, uh, on 3D printing, go ahead and drop it down in the comments. I'm still really new to this, uh, so any helpful tip helps. But for people who are new to printing face shells and whatnot, uh, this is the uh, video kind of thing for you. So the first thing I did, I was trying to print my face shells was I scaled them to my head size. Now everyone's head sizes are different. Andre Blend mentions in the description of the files that if, that if it's a 22 and a half inch head, so the circumference of your head fits, uh, this is about 22 and a half inches. My head is 22 and a half inches, but at 100% it was still too small and too tight. So what I did was I just scaled everything 
106%. So every file that you have, you're gonna print out, you're gonna do it in 106% if you know you have the same head size for me, but if it's different, uh, you're just gonna have to figure that out like I did. The next thing I did was, because I don't want too many supports, I turned the actual face shell itself 180 degrees and printed it out like that. And since I didn't want it to print out for so long, I didn't print it out at super quality. I just printed it out in standard. Like I mentioned before, I tried printing it out at low quality, but it just ended up breaking on me. So I just printed it at standard quality. Then you go ahead and click slice. And then there it tells me it's gonna take about a day and 20 hours, so about two days. Print this entire face shell out and you can hit preview. And then it's gonna show you a little preview of what it's gonna look like when it's all printed out. Now, onto the jaw. The jaw I did again was I quickly scaled it up 106%, boom. And then to make sure there weren't, again, too many supports, I just, uh, turned it so that the jaw is kind of laying flat on itself. So about there, all these sides are kind of flat on the surface of your printing bed. And then I just hit slice. I also printed this at standard quality. Everything under the mask, I printed it in standard quality because it's gonna be under the mask anyways. And you can just sand it down if you want it smoother. And there it's gonna tell me it's gonna take nine hours to do. The left lens, again, we're gonna go ahead. Now I'm just gonna review the uh, one lens. I'm not gonna go through both because it's the same process. Again, 106%. I didn't do anything to like rotate it. The only thing I did was change it from sander quality. Super quality, so I wouldn't have to do much sanding because there is a lot of smaller details in this. So I just changed it to super quality. Didn't change anything about the positioning. I just hit slice. And there we go. It's gonna, it tells me it's gonna take six hours. So yeah, and then you just save it to your uh, mini SD card, plug it into your 3D printer and just start 3D printing everything. And then now we get to how I put everything together. After sanding down the face shell pieces and the lens frames, I duct taped the jaw piece to the face shell to secure it as I'm gluing on the spandex. I cut a piece of spandex in the shape of a half circle just a little bigger than the face shell since we're going to be stretching it out to the inside of the face shell. I started by putting some super glue across the bridge of the nose as a starting point. Then after I placed the spandex on, I put glue under where the lenses would go. After that's glued down, I super glued the edges of the inside and stretch out the spandex to go inside. After that's all down, I just trimmed the spandex in the inside and around the lens holes. Now onto the lenses. I already painted the lens frames after sanding them using Rust-Oleum Flat Black. For the lenses themselves, I just used the mesh that came with my Matthew De La Cruz face shell and lenses and I just glued them on. Then I went in with the magnets that I purchased on Amazon, gluing them in the lenses in the face shell. So here I have the face shell on uh, with my old PS4 Spider-Man mask. I don't have a detachable uh, MCU kind of mask style, so I just kind of went with this. And as you can see, it's pretty perfect. I love the face shape, I love the lenses, and I love how it's kind of flush with the mask a little. And I love I can move my jaw up and down comfortably. I don't really have to worry about it squishing or anything. It's just nice movement, so you can get a close up of the jaw moving. It's barely noticeable, but it adds a lot to the actual little, like, face shell itself that you can kind of open your mouth wide. And it also just makes the face shell a little more fluid. It doesn't look like it's an actual shell when you kind of open your mouth. It looks like, you know, you're just you're moving your jaw. So if you haven't already, go ahead and follow Andre Blount on Instagram. And if you want this face shell on lens uh, file, again, I'll leave it in the description of the video. But yeah, this... I think came out great, and I think it's gonna look great when it actually goes with the Far From Home mask. Ugh, let me just take this off real quick. Now something I didn't add um, in when I was putting this together on camera was I added in padding from an old Far From Home face shell, uh, just so it's a little more comfortable, you can see there. I've mentioned it before in my other face shell tutorial videos. And another thing I would have liked to have done was spray on some Plasti Dip like I do my other face shells, so it just has a little more grip to it, but because half of it is spandex now, uh, I don't want to ruin anything, so I'm just going to leave it as it is, even though 
uh, you know, it's gonna slip everywhere and turn out like this towards the end of the day. And just some other updates for you guys on what's happening with Far From Home Suit. Don't worry, other parts are coming. I know I said I would show you guys how to transfer your pattern onto red, the red color spandex, but, you know, I have other things to do. I have school, and I also have to finish up my last commission for my buddy the devil cosplays so after this part i'm gonna be focusing more on that commission finish that up as uh as fast as i can because you know he's waiting on it i want i've been waiting to see him put it on because it's looking absolutely great so far and i have 3d printed something else for this uh cosplay it's these little web shooters that i got uh i know i showed you guys the file i was using for these web shooters but luckily the creator of those web shooter files um, saw this video and then contacted me on Instagram saying he has an updated file of these that are a little more accurate. So I said, yeah, I'll take those. And yeah, that's <laughs> where I got these little updated web shooters. They're perfect in size. I didn't have to adjust them at all. I just printed them out it was and painted them. So yeah, the, the web shooters are done. <laughs> Go ahead and follow him on Instagram too, because he, uh, yeah, he didn't really have to do this, but he did anyways. Just. I don't know why, but yeah, give him a follow. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next part, hopefully soon. Probably, maybe not.